there's no denying that people have issues with dairy from a digestive perspective. And it seems to kind of be on almost a sliding scale. Like we used to think that you were either lactose intolerant or you were not. And it was plain and simple. But now we're seeing people with varying levels of digestive issues when they have dairy. Sometimes it's bloating. Sometimes it's even brain fog related, right? Like, and we're seeing people with like gut dysbiosis. So it kind of begs the question, like, what is it? Because lactose intolerance might not be the real issue. And I, I have a study that outlines this pretty well, where essentially they gave people different types of milk, different types of uh, milk coming from different varieties of cattle, literally. And in a double blind crossover design, people that were lactose intolerant were able to consume milk that had quite a bit of lactose in it, no problem, as long as it was the A2 variety. But they didn't know that. It was double blind, right? So they essentially were consuming a type of milk that is not the type of milk we would normally consume as normal milk in the United States and a lot of the world. Now, interestingly enough, the other type of milk, A1, this caused digestive issues, and this is rated in a score that's called the Post-Dairy Digestive Discomfort Score, or the PD3 score. Okay, so when they had A1, or normal type milk, even people that were not, quote unquote, lactose intolerant, developed digestive issues to a certain degree. Okay, now this study was published in Nutrition Journal. It was a human study, and it was a good study, but they didn't just measure, like, digestibility, pain, and things like that. They also looked at inflammatory markers. They saw that people that were consuming A1 had increases in inflammatory markers. So the inflammatory cytokines that are largely associated with brain fog, but also potentially joint pain. So when people say dairy is inflammatory, that is a broad sweeping statement that I don't think we wanna just come out right and say, because with anything, we need nuance. We need to understand what is potentially happening. So why is there a gut issue with dairy with some people, but not with others? It almost seems as though the variety of milk has an effect on almost everyone to a certain degree, but it might impact people to a larger degree depending on just who they are. But it seems as though it's more about an issue with the proteins than the lactose itself. Okay, there are people that are lactose intolerant. I'm not saying that doesn't exist. Okay, but when you look at what are called beta caseomorphins, these are casein proteins that are in dairy and they are different when you look at different dairy types. Here's an example too. People that are lactose intolerant can usually have goat milk or sheep milk. It's not because of the lactose though. It seems, well, I think, it seems to be much more because goat milk and sheep milk is A2 milk. Now, cows can create A2 milk too. We've just genetically sort of bred that out of them to go to this A1 variety because it produces more milk. Now let's talk a little bit more about digestibility here. There was a study in July 2024 in Nutrition Reviews that found that when subjects consumed A1 type protein, there was an increase in what's called DNA methylation. Okay, and this DNA methylation happened in neuronal cells, but it also happened in GI epithelial cells. So cells that were in the actual gastrointestinal tract. This ultimately led to a change in gene expression within these gastrointestinal cells. What is gene expression? Well, it's how a gene sort of expresses to become something, okay? So if I were to express genes for neuronal growth, I would be taking my DNA and activating it to express brain growth and development, right? Obviously, expression is happening at a significantly higher degree in a developing human, but as we get older, it's still happening, right? Like gene expression may be slowing down in certain ways, but we have expression happening all the time for new cells, new development. So when we have an altered gene expression in our gut, it's, there's speculation that this could be impacting our gut long-term and actually making us have less of uh, ability to tolerate dairy. So it's almost as though our intolerance to dairy seems to get worse as time goes on, but it could be the fact that our cellular entire makeup could be changing. Now, I wanna pivot over to an animal model study for just a second, because this illustrates something from a, like a digestive, like microbiome perspective a little bit more. Took a look at rodents, gave them either A1 variety milk or A2 variety milk, okay? And did this for 30 days or four weeks in this case. Significant changes in the gut microbiome 
like a shift in the microbiome, more good bacteria, less bad bacteria in the A2 protein group, the A2 milk group rather. The A1 group had changes in their gut bacteria that were not good and a reduction in short chain fatty acids. So a reduction in short chain fatty acids, short chain fatty acids are what are produced by the microbes in our gut. So if we were to let's say consume some asparagus and our body had to break down the fibers in it, okay, the gut microbiome is gonna to continue to break down those indigestible fibers until your end result is short chain fatty acids. Those short chain fatty acids then impact us in a multitude of ways. They impact our glucose levels, our fatty acid oxidation, they impact our brain. The list goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Hugely important. So what we're seeing is that, okay, maybe a one type milk is not beneficial for the gut microbiome, thereby resulting in a reduction in the downstream short chain fatty acids within our colon, within our gut. Actually detrimental to the gut, not just short term negative effects like digestive discomfort, but potentially longer term issues. So the question is, once again, why are we consuming a one milk? It's not anything like evil, it's simply just the way it has evolved over time because our systems and processes in the United States and in a lot of other places of the world are set up for the A1 variety because it produces more yield, it's more milk. And in order to make this change, you'd have to change everything, not just the breed of cattle. All the infrastructure would change. The other thing that is a huge, huge, huge glaring problem is that there is a strong connection between socioeconomic status and awareness of A2 milk being potentially higher quality. So people that have more money and are more like, I don't know, privy to details, they know about this, but people of lower socioeconomic status do not. This is a bummer because no wonder there's not a demand because only people that like are privy to details or are, have money see it. That's my job. I want people to understand this, okay? And there are companies out there, not just one, there are companies that are pushing the A2 variety that have exclusive farms with the A2 breeds and we're seeing more of a demand for it and we need people that are watching these videos to have demand or create demand for it so that things change because yeah, there's not enough data to really like push it from a safety perspective. Not enough data to say BCM7 is hugely problematic, but there is enough data to say that BCM7, maybe A1 breed milk might not be better. There is a better option that might make it easier on the digestive system. You may have seen there's a company at Target that's been on like in displays like for the last couple of months. Like they're really pushing hard, a company called Pioneer Pastures. I am connected with them as well because I'm trying to push this. So yes, I do have an affiliation with them. But I encourage you to go to Target, go to target.com, buy this type of milk. Seriously, it's reasonably priced, it's competitively priced, it's a competitor to fair life, but it's doing it with the right kind of A2 milk, right? So it's still filtered milk. So you can get the filtered milk like in the gallon jugs or you can get the protein drinks and it's literally going to be 75% more protein, 50% less sugar than regular milk and it's an A2 variety. So just go to Target and buy this stuff. And it's probably popping up at more stores by the time this video is releasing. It's called Pioneer Pastures. I'll also link out to them down below so you can check them out. But even if you don't buy Pioneer Pastures, like there's other brands. You could also buy local like, and ask, are you using A2 variety? Small farms are a lot of times are using A2 variety. You're only gonna find the A1 variety when you're looking at mass production because they have more yield and it's a little bit cheaper to kind of scale it that way. So smaller farms, but not everyone can just go down the street to Bill and Sally's farm to get their A2 milk, okay? So the point is, yes, Pioneer Pastures is great because it's at Target and it's available. Other A2 brands, great, go for it. Also, if you have the ability, go to a local farm. I think we're starting to see that the digestive issues with dairy are not just from dairy as a whole. They're from the proteins that are probably hard to break down and triggering potential gut permeability. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.